Hi everyone, welcome to my second live engineering lesson. Uh, if you didn't watch last week's one, please don't worry. Um, it's on my YouTube channel, so you can have a look at that one after we've finished here today. Uh, just to remind you though, this lesson is primarily for students from Collingwood College. Um, anyone is free to watch, but the worksheet in the description will only work for those students from Collingwood, and it will be going live at the end of today's lesson. Uh, just to remind you, there will be no lessons for the next two weeks, as uh, we've got the Easter break, but uh, if we're not back in school by the time term starts again, then I'll be uh, back here doing another lesson, and it will be back at our usual time on Wednesday at 12 o'clock. Uh, before I start today though, I would like to use this opportunity to ask for your help. Now we're in, a mid in the middle of this uh, major pandemic and it's putting a huge strain on our NHS and key workers and currently they don't have enough protective gear to help them out. So some of you might have seen yesterday that I've started to uh, join the growing numbers of volunteers making face visors to help those key workers and I'd like to encourage anyone out there that has a 3D printer or knows someone that does to get involved and help out with making these. Uh, so far, there's been over 186,000 visors requested uh, by key workers, and this number is only going to increase over the next few weeks. So please, if you can, uh, join the already 3,500 volunteers by uh, visiting 3dcrowd.uk and registering your uh, interest to help there. I've put the link in the YouTube description to help as well. Now it's very fitting that my lesson today is going to talk about the technology that makes this all possible. Uh, let's have a look then at our objectives for today's lesson. So by the end of today we'll know what CAM and CNC stand for, you'll understand how a 3D printer works and be able to explain how a 3D printer can create a part. Now throughout the next couple of lessons we're going to be looking at CAM. So CAM is computer-aided manufacture. And essentially, computer-aided manufacture involves any machine that can make a product that's uh, not controlled just by a human. So it's an automated process controlled by a computer. And there are loads of benefits to having a machine controlled in this way. It can work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, without any human interference. And it can create a whole load of identical parts repeatedly. So that's the big uh, selling point there. Now there are loads of different types of CAM, but they all have one big thing in common. They're controlled using CNC, or Computer Numeric Control. Essentially, that means uh, it's using a computer to operate a machine using numbers, but I'm gonna come back to this a little bit later on to show you exactly what this means. Now over the next two lessons, we're gonna look at two different types of CAM process, removal and addition. Removal processes start off with a big block of material, like this one here, this is HDPE, a thermoplastic we looked at last lesson. And a removal process will start off with a big block of material, get a cutting tool and start removing pieces of this to give you a finished product. Uh, this is quite a wasteful process as any removed material tends to be lost as swarf or dust, which can be quite hard to recycle and reuse. So removal processes takes away material. On the other hand, addition processes add material. So it only adds what's necessary. So it's a lot more um, conservative with the amount of material that it uses. A lot less waste goes on there. And this lesson today is gonna to focus on one particular kind of addition process is going to look at this one here, the 3D printer. Now there are actually loads of different types of 3D printer out there. This one is what we call an FDM printer. An FDM stands for Fused Deposition Modeling. And it sounds really complicated, but all it means is that it builds up a model by joining or fusing material together. And it deposits it on a build platform and builds it up in layers. It actually works in the same way as this hot glue gun. So we load in our material, we load in uh, this, in this case, the glue stick into the glue gun. As we squeeze the trigger, it heats it up in this chamber here, which melts the hot glue and pushes it out of the nozzle. If we were to build up layers of hot glue on a surface, we could create a really crude 3D part. So that's how it works. An 
FDM printer, such as this one here, works in exactly the same way, except the process is automated. And instead of glue, it uses a reel of thermoplastic. If you remember from last lesson, thermoplastics can be melted and uh, reheated and reused and reshaped. So this thermoplastic filament is called PLA, so polylactic acid, that's the one we're using here. And instead of our glue gun, we have an extruder mechanism which looks like this one here. So to replace the trigger, we have a stepper motor. It's a really accurate kind of motor that we can control really precisely. This stepper motor moves the little wheel in here that pulls filament off of the roll and pushes it down. We've got a heater down here. This heats up our filament to about 200 degrees before pushing it out of the tiny little nozzle underneath. And this whole unit here at the bottom is called the hot end, as it heats it up and pushes out our filament. Now that heats up to about 200 degrees to melt PLA, as it uh, takes quite a lot of uh, heat to melt it down to reshape it. Now if we look at my 3D printer here, the extruder mechanism is mounted right here, and it can be moved in three different directions. And we call these directions axes, exactly the same as you'd find on a graph in maths. And just like uh, the axes on a graph, they're called X, which is our side to side movement. Y is the forward and backwards movement we've got here. And Z is the up and down movement. And just like with our extruder, each axis is moved by a stepper motor. So we've got two stepper motors that move our Z axis, and there's one for the X and Y. And remember, those stepper motors are really accurate motors that we can position over and over again to the same point. So we can tell them exactly where to move to. But the big question is, how do we tell these motors where to go to build up our path? Well, if we remember earlier, we said that CNC stands for Computer Numeric Control. So we're going to use numbers to tell this printer where to move to or more accurately, we're going to use coordinates. So each axis is going to be given a coordinate to move to, and that will move the motor to a certain point. Every time you want it to move, we feed it a new coordinate, and that moves the X, Y, and Z to different positions every time you feed it with a new position or a new coordinate. To generate these coordinates, we have to start off with a 3D model of our part. Now in school, we use Autodesk Inventor to create a 3D model, but we can use other programs uh, such as SketchUp or Fusion will do the job just as well. We then export uh, the 3D design file as an STL file. Let's write that down for you. This file format is used for most types of 3D machines. So we take this STL file and we have to convert it to this program that runs our machine. We have to turn it from a 3D model into our list of coordinates. And we do that using a program called Cura. So Cura is our go-between. That's what takes us from our computerized 3D model to our 3D printer. And it does that by slicing up our uh, model into lots of really tiny layers and that creates our coordinate list that we can send to the printer. And we call Cura a slicing software, as it takes our model and slices it up into the layers that can then be interpreted by our 3D printer. Uh, this is what Cura looks like if you were to load this up on your uh, computer at home. Already you can see on the uh, build platform there, I've got the design for some of those uh, NHS face visors. It's the headband part there. And down the right hand side of the screen, you might not be able to read it if it's uh, coming out a little small, but we've got all of the computerized settings that we can change for our 3D printer. We've got the temperature that we can set the extruder to, we've got the build platform temperature, and all of the speeds that we can use. So we can either print things quickly or slowly, depending on the accuracy. We can control all of that uh, by changing those settings on the right hand side of the screen. If we were to click that blue button in the bottom right hand corner that says save to file, we can then create our program. But because our program no longer just has coordinates in there, it's got our temperatures, we call that program the G-code. 
And if we have a look here, uh, this is what our G code looks like. So it's a long list of different commands that can be sent to the 3D printer. And if we look down towards uh, the bottom part of the page down here, you can see we're starting to get our long list of coordinates. So everything uh, up here in about the top two thirds of the page are the initializing commands. They set up the printer with our uh, right temperatures. The rest of it is the coordinate list that tells it where to move to. Let's have a little look then at breaking down this code and working out exactly what it does. The first couple of commands we've got set up our temperatures. So they heat up the build platform and they heat up the extruder. Now some of you might be wondering why we need to heat up that build platform. Uh, the simple answer is to make sure that our material sticks to that platform. By heating it up, in this case we're heating it to 100 degrees, uh, that makes sure that the first layer of filament that we lay down stays slightly melted, slightly soft, and that means it stays slightly sticky and will stick itself down to that platform because you don't want the uh, print moving as it goes. You can imagine that if the part became unstuck, it's gonna end up making a bit of a mess as the printer's not gonna know where to extrude that material. Uh, below that then, we've got homing each axis. That just moves each axis to the coordinate zero, 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 and that's so the printer knows where it's starting from. Um, then the extruder is gonna push out a small amount of plastic. That's just to uh, clear out the nozzle, remove any old material, and get fresh uh, PLA ready to extrude. We can also see that for this particular piece of G-code, there are 75 layers. Uh, that could complete the whole part. And it starts off by initialising that position, so it sets the starting point for X, Y and Z, because you don't always want to start your print right in the corner of the uh, 3D printer. Normally, we try and start them in the middle of the platform. And every uh, line of code after that is going to be moving the nozzle using the X and Y axis while extruding material, and that's what that E value means. So you've got an X coordinate, a Y coordinate, and an E coordinate, and that E value is just telling the extruder to push out plastic. And as it moves from point to point, it pushes out new plastic to build up the part. And as you can see here with my 3D printer, it is moving only the X and Y axes at the moment until it finishes that layer, and then it moves it up to the next point. And if we put all of that G-code together, that creates the file that the printer can understand. Let's have a look at a 3D print in action so we can see this uh, happen a lot quicker than it is at the moment. So we join our 3D print as it's already done about 30 layers. And it is starting to build up this part. And you can see the Z-axis is slowly moving up as it finishes each layer. Now you might not be able to work out at the moment what it's printing because most of my product is encased in support material. So Cura is incredibly clever because it knows that if there's any parts of the print which are gonna be overhanging that might not print properly, it can build up a supporting structure around the outside to hold those pieces up. And once the print's done, you can snap off those supporting structures to leave you with a nice clean print. So hopefully you might be able to work out what's being printed now. It's starting to give the game away a little bit. There we go. If I go back to my camera, what that was actually printing was this little guy, Baby Yoda. Uh, so I downloaded this file from uh, Thingiverse. So if you've got your own 3D printer and struggling for ideas of what to print, you can download this guy for free. And you can see that I've taken away the support material that was holding up his arm and his ears. If we didn't have the support material, these would uh, just drop down to the build platform when it was printing, and it would just look a bit of a mess. You'd end up with a big pile of plastic spaghetti on the build platform. So the support structure holds it all up. And I've still got some of the supporting structure on the back that I've not taken off yet. You can break this away by hand, and it leaves you with a nice clean print that's been fully supported. Now that didn't take too long. So let's sum up what we've had a look at today. Uh, by comparing this to our lesson objectives. So by now then, we
we should know that CAM stands for Computer Aided Manufacture. And it means that it's any machine that's not manually operated, it's an automated computer controlled machine that can be used to make a product. A CNC then is Computer Numeric Control, essentially using coordinates or numbers to operate a machine and those instructions, those coordinates are going to be sent by a computer. And then our 3D printer builds up uh, a part layer by layer by following these coordinates while extruding out this thermoplastic PLA filament. And that's how we go from a reel of plastic wire to our 3D model. Now I've kept it quite brief today, so that's all I'm going to talk about today. I'll be back.